Hey folks, I hope you're doing well tonight. So this video is a continuation of the series done by A Drop of Melancholy called God is Evil and Religion is Utter BS. So he specifically requested that myself and Bleak Past do a collaboration series on this topic of which I am more than happy to oblige. So shout out to both you, brother, a drop of melancholy, as well as to you, bleak past. This video is going to first focus on the psychology behind religion, and more specifically, behind Judeo-Christian religion in particular, which includes Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, of the non-Gnostic varieties. Because the Gnostic views are very distinct from the traditional Judeo-Christian views. Traditional in quotations, of course. So, the first thing you need to understand about the religious psychology, and the foremost thing that that really is at play here that you need to understand is going on in the brain chemistry of a Judeo-Christian monotheist, religious person, right? A believer, a faither, etc. What's going on in their psychology is they're considering that as long as something is caused or done by or sourced by a powerful enough entity, then whatever evil is done or whatever horrors take place or whatever agony or exploitation is inflicted, it's ultimately good because it was caused by a powerful enough being. So the brain chemistry is wired to process You being a big enough cosmic mob boss equals, once you get to a certain power threshold and you can create your own rules, then, and only then, can you just start declaring right and left what you decide or think is good or not. But you first have to become a big enough cosmic mob boss to do that. Or you have to already be a big enough cosmic mob boss, rather. So the way Judeo-Christian monotheists are defining good is they're defining good as something ultimately caused by a powerful enough cosmic mob boss. You see? As long as you've got the power the power, then anything you say goes. You can just decide what you feel like is good or not because you're the cosmic mob boss. You can say and point your finger and say, I see this and therefore I say it is good. And then they'll happily obey and they'll happily agree because you're at that power threshold. So when it comes down to them, they're worshiping power directly. This is how you know for certain they're worshiping the Demiurge, because if you lack power, for example, if you are me, or if you are a drop of melancholy, or if you are a bleak past, or any of us other content creators, because we don't have cosmic mob boss power to create our own rules for universes yet anyway, Hopefully we'll get there so we can adjust and change this shit show and give you all much better universes, far better than this piece of crap. But I digress. The point is, since we don't have that power currently, and we may never have that degree of power, we have no validity in terms of saying what is good or not because we're not a cosmic mob boss. Right? 
just translate mob to host of angels or host of demons or host of powerful entities. Take your pick, right? Your posse, right? Because we're not cosmic mob bosses. If we say something is bad, like a child being tortured to death, and we say that is clearly, objectively, or insanely, widely, applicably subjective to the point that it may as well be objective, right? If we say that about something and say that is specifically clearly bad and evil and wrong and horrible and should never occur, there is nothing good about that. There's no ultimate good to that either. They consider what we say to be completely and entirely invalid because we are not cosmic mob bosses, folks. Who they value and worship are cosmic mob bosses. And if you're not a cosmic mob boss, well, it doesn't matter what you say or think or believe or whatever, even if it's completely obvious, because their view is that, oh, because you're an entity that lacks power, you're an entity that has no say in what is actually good. Think how fucked up that is for a minute. It's insanely fucked up, but you understand everything. And I kid you not, you'll understand everything about a religious Judeo-Christian's psychology when you understand this key principle right here. You'll understand everything about it. It's power worship. And there's no way around it. You have a conversation with these people, they will eventually have to admit this. They must admit it because there is no escape from them acknowledging what they're actually worshiping. In fact, you just drag it out of them. Okay, so you have to admit what you're worshiping here is the fact that this entity has vastly more power than you or me. It's the power that you're specifically worshiping. And you're saying that, oh, no, we're worshiping the love, we're worshiping the affection, but you're only doing that because the entity also has power. Cosmic mob boss levels of power. That's why you're valuing the love and affection from that entity. Or what you call is love and affection, or what it says is it's love and affection. Because it's because what it says goes, right? If it says it has an ultimate purpose behind torturing your child to death, then because it's the cosmic mob boss, what it says goes in the religious Judeo-Christian's mind. Throw hands up in the air. Power! I got the power! You got the power, Lord! Lordy Lord! Right? It's power worship. It's demiurge worship. <laughs> So if you're worshiping an entity of power, you're going to be powered over and plowed over emotionally, mentally, psychologically, etc. Duh, because that's what you're fucking worshiping. And it's interesting when I've talked to people about this who are Judeo-Christian monotheists, when I say, hey, actually, my view towards divinity is that you have completely distinct entities different aspects of, you could say, root reality. You have one aspect that is directly the pleasure aspect directly, that does the pleasure thing. And then you have another aspect that does the horror, pain, infliction, malevolent, evil thing. And then you have another aspect that does the knowledge, awareness thing, sentience thing, right? And you have three, you have distinct entities going on, doing their things that have their individual departments, right? They just, they can't, they, it's like, they can't handle worshiping an entity that is only an entity of love and affection or pleasure, but has nothing to do with power at all, and doesn't really have anything to do with what we call knowledge at all either, per se. They just, they can't handle it. Even if you're talking, okay, there's an entity that has to do with pleasure and knowledge, but not power, they also can't handle that either. No, no. The, the entity has to be all-powerful. They're fixated and obsessed with the entity having cosmic mob boss power. It has to have that for them. Otherwise, they go nuts. They flip out. They go crazy. Mentally, internally, they start doubting and having all this, you know, mental turmoil and anguish and all this stuff just because the entity isn't literally entirely powerful. 
it's like, well, why, why the fuck, why would you worship something other than power? Like, why would you worship power? Why wouldn't you worship something other than power? Why would you not only worship things other than power that have to do with pleasure, affection, etc., and specifically not worship power? Why wouldn't you do that? See, as a Gnostic, you can grasp this and understand this, or as an atheist or as a secularist or whoever, you can grasp it just fine. If you're a non-religious person, whether you're a non-religious theist or a non-religious atheist or whatever, or a non-religious agnostic, you take your pick. You can grasp it if you're not religious. But it's the religious Judeo-Christian monotheist that cannot grasp this. And even if they can grasp it, they have to come back to admitting that they're worshipping power, the principle of power, power in an entity. And they're obsessed with the fucking thing, folks. They're obsessed with this power principle. Absolutely obsessed with it. Why? Because power is what operates this cosmos. Energy. Stuff clashing around, bashing around, smashing around. Force. The principle of force. Impositional force. Etc. Power! This is a universe of power. That's what it is. What do you do? Turn on the light. Oh, you're sending power to that, that light bulb, right? Turning on a generator to keep yourself warm so you don't die of hypothermia in the winter. What is it doing? It's generating power. It's using power. Power, 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 right? That's how this entire fucking cosmos, this entire shit show operates on power. This is why powerful things devour weak things. Because that's how the whole fucking thing operates. And it's fucking horrific. It's the very thing you shouldn't be worshipping. If anything, you should be worshipping anything and everything that, that is specifically a distinct, separate principle from this power principle. Actually, if you're going to worship anything, make sure it's something other than power for fuck's sake. And knowledge is connected to power, too. So that's that's another thing in and of itself. But... If you can just understand this one thing, you'll literally be able to save yourself so much time in any possible conversation that may come up with a Judeo-Christian monotheist. Just hone in on this point, and they'll have to admit to you they're worshipping power. And that that's what you're unwilling to do. I'm not willing to worship power itself or anything that has to do with power specifically. I'm not going to worship that thing. And you just make that specifically clear to them. And then they'll just shut up. They'll stop talking to you. They'll stop interacting with you with those, with the religious stupidity because they'll have no choice but to stop because they'll get it. They're like, okay, I'm a power worshiper. This person is not a power worshiper. That's all there is to it. Literally. Literally. So there's no way you can convince a non a person who's opposed to worshiping power to, to get them to start worshiping power because they're specifically for a really good reason not worshiping the damn thing. Power is something to be used for its functionality never worshiped. You see folks? You don't worship the electricity running through your house's electrical cords. Why would you? So why the fuck would you worship a cosmic mob boss that has power? The only reason you'd ever do that is out of fear. Otherwise, there is no reason to ever do it. Because if there's nothing to fear, then there's no point in worshipping the damn thing. Is there? But it's only if there is something to fear... That's why people worship the fucking thing. Why is there something to fear? Because it's powerful. <laughs> it's got the power. Peter Gabriel, Sledgehammer. Check it out. Totally encoded. This exact principle encoded. <sighs> Perfectly in that music video. The principle of power being worshipped remains the sledgehammer of everything that exists. I am mighty and worthy of praise. I am cosmic mob boss. 
more powerful than any of you. Rawr. Well, what's more powerful than anything else that has power? Power itself directly. Right? Think about it. What's more powerful than anything that has power? Power directly is more powerful. Because it's the thing itself directly. Not separated out. <laughs> and then they'll say, oh, you know, he's an entity that uses power, etc. No, no, it's... <laughs> They don't even understand their own psychology all the way properly. It's like, no, folks, what you're worshiping is power directly, for fuck's sake. And once you can understand that, you'll immediately zip out of the religious worldview in a heartbeat. You'll be like, this is fucked up to worship power. I need to stop. But then you do. You're just no longer religious once you stop worshiping power. Or at least you're no longer a Judeo-Christian monotheist, that's for damn sure, of a non-Gnostic type. <clears throat> so you got to understand, people who are driven on belief or faith or are religious, their brain chemistry is aligned with valuing and appreciating power in and of itself as a worshipful thing, persona, being, etc. That is the difference between their brain chemistry and yours. You are an entity or a person who is not worshipping power. They are. You are not. They are. Different brain chemistry. This is why until a person snaps out of religious worldviews or faith-based worldviews, their brain chemistry will not be altered yet. So they won't be able to process the way you are processing things. It's not that the religious person is not able to process what you are able to process. They are. They're just not going to process it in the same way that you process it, okay? So when they hear things that have to do with power, large-scale power, their inclination is to greater the power, the more worthy of worship it is, past a certain threshold. Your consciousness is the greater the power, the less worthy of worship the thing is. Because greater power equals greater malevolence. Greater force against wills. Greater force against sentiences. Imposition on more sentiences, etc. You catch my drift. So the very thing that they're valuing is the very exact fucking thing you're despising. The very thing they're valuing to a worshipful degree is the same exact fucking thing that you are despising to a disgusted degree. You're understanding each other. You're just not understanding it the way they are and vice versa. That's all. <laughs> it's a different brain chemistry they're working with. So when it comes down to these discussions, you can just completely save you and the other person all the time in the world by just being like, okay, you value power as long as it's a big enough version of power. I don't. <laughs> you value it. I don't value it. I value pleasure. I don't value power. Beyond its functional use for things. Right? I don't value it for its own sake, for its scale or its vastness or its scope. I value it for what it actually does practically in clear and obvious benevolent ways or not. If the power thing or person or persona or entity isn't doing the power thing in a clearly and obviously benevolent way, that's clearly and obviously pleasure inducing in clear and obvious ways, that's clear and obvious to every sentience involved, then it's useless. It's a useless form of power and it shouldn't be fucking worshipped. It should be opposed. 
it's a misuse of power. It's a misused power. It's an improperly used power. You're not going to worship the mob boss who's swinging his sledgehammer, cracking skulls open in a back alley. So why worship the cosmic mob boss? Well, out of fear, because you can escape. Their psychology is that they can escape the, the mob boss swinging a sledgehammer in a back alley, right? They can physically be in a different location. But if you're dealing with a cosmic mob boss that's literally everywhere all at once, all at the same time, who's swinging his sledgehammer at all of our skulls 24-7 every day constantly, then they figure, oh, well, I may as well get on the good side of this cosmic mob boss who's crushing all of us anyway, and I may as well just agree that when he says something's good, it's good, because damn well, I'm going to burn fucking forever if I don't, because he says so. That's their psychology. They're like, well... Because he's a big enough mob boss, literally, I have to listen to the fucker. Whereas we're like, no, that's every reason to not listen to him and to oppose him. To grab his fucking sledgehammer and swing it at his skull, for fuck's sake. For all the skulls he's crushed with it, right? I'm your sledgehammer. As the saying goes, right? And that's the sick sadistic part about it. Like, think about it. If we ourselves, you and me, let's say if I was, or a drop of melancholy or a bleak past was, or any content creator, if we were in the position of having that power, of being that entity, they'd fucking be worshiping us. We wouldn't even want the fucking worship. We'd be like, God damn it, these people are worshiping us. They don't get it. They just don't fucking understand it. Like, they, they need to not be worshiping us. They need to be worshiping a different thing other than us. We're a fucking cosmic mob boss. They shouldn't be worshiping our asses. That's fucked up. <laughs> We'd be fucking miserable being cosmic mob bosses. We'd fucking be despising that position. <laughs> Fuck, I'd want any other position than that, to be honest with you. You know? God damn it. You know, I should do a whole like video series on that. I will. I'm going to do it. Like think about, so think about myself personally, right? And think about bleak past, a drop of melancholy, Mark Antinatalist, all the different content creators to talk about this stuff. Think about how much better of a fucking world or a universe each and every one of us we create. That's so much goddamn fucking better than this shit show. And that, that right by itself, that alone should tell you everything you goddamn need to know about this fucking thing behind this particular cosmos and how goddamn horrific the fucking thing is. The fact that every single one of us, every one of you listening could create a far more merciful, far more loving, affectionate, pleasure filled, better version of a fucking universe than this better version of an earth or world. Every, every one of you can create a better fucking version just by thinking about it for fuck's sake. Every one of you and not a single one of us are an entity of that degree of fucking power. But this universe would instantly fucking be better if any of us were any of us fucking take any of us. You, me, Joe Schmo tuning in for the first time tonight. Thank you, by the way, whoever you may be. I say that in affection, you know, some random person tuning in. Okay, cool. That person could create a better fucking universe than this one. If you're a regular listener, a regular subscriber, you sure as hell could create a better universe than this one. That's for damn sure. But who's what or who is stopping us from doing that? Power. Power directly. The entity that is fucking power. That's the thing that's stopping us from doing that. Because we're entities that are oppositional to the power principle. God damn it. <laughs> So, because we're entities oppositional to the power principle, we ourselves are distinct things from this shit show. Every ounce of our sentience as an empathic individual is oppositional to this shit show. Every ounce of us is. You know? So it's like... Fuck, man. 
You've got a thing that's this goddamn evil and sadistic or aloof or indifferent or whatever the fuck the thing is. And people are worshiping this goddamn thing? Fuck, man. You gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. And many of us used to be there because that's all we fucking knew until we knew better, right? Me and Mark Antonatalis had a very similar experience in this regards. You know? Many other content creators did as well. That's like, that's all you hear, that's all you know until you know better. Until you know sis. Until you know what the fuck's up. You don't know until you know, you know? <laughs> that's how it goes, bro. So... And this is what's going on with the religious psychology. They just don't fucking know yet. They're not in Gnosis yet. They don't get it. They're just worshiping power. That's all there fucking is to it, folks. So until their brain chemistry is altered, it's, it's just going to go around in circles talking to them. Because they'll understand what you're saying. You'll understand what they're saying. But your, your brain chemistry is processing the same exact fucking thing totally differently. That's what's happening. So worshiping power rewires the brain chemistry in a bad way that is contributory to perpetuation of pain and agony and anguish. Thus why so many Judeo-Christian monotheists are either natalists, purposely bringing new forms here, or they are fake, false, hypocritical, so-called celibates molesting and raping children. One or the other. Or craving and desiring sex and watching porn in a back room in a dark alley somewhere, jacking off, and then stepping on the altar the next day. One of the two types of people. Okay? One of the two. You're the fake celibate hypocrite that's not actually celibate in their thoughts or feelings or jack-off behaviors, or... Someone ejaculating into wombs, purposefully bringing new kids here. One or the other. That's all there is to it. Or someone artificially trying to do either. Unsuccessfully. So there you have it, folks. There is your psychology of Judeo-Christian monotheism explains. And in other videos, we'll talk about the psychology behind other types of religious worldviews as well, and what distinguishes religious views from Gnostic, skeptic, or verifiable via evidence views. We'll talk about what distinguishes those very fucking clearly in videos ahead. Because Judeo-Christian monotheism is not the only religious view that's fucked up and flawed. There's other religious views that are also fucked up and flawed, and we'll explain why and how and the reasons for those too. We'll cover Hinduism, we'll cover Buddhism, we will cover all these other things. You name it. Spiritualism in general, etc., 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 so on and so forth. Taoism you know, Shintoism, on and on. We'll, just, we'll cover them. So with this, I hope you now understand beyond any shadow of a doubt what you're dealing with, with Judeo-Christian monotheism. It's power worship. It's worship of a cosmic mob boss with a specific threshold of power. That is what they give the thumbs up to in terms of worth, worth of worship. Enough power equals worthy of worship in their minds and hearts and in their thoughts. And they only value the love of such an entity because of the power. Because if you tell them, well, I worship an entity that's only an entity of love but has nothing to do with the power principle whatsoever, they just look at you like you're crazy or insane. So it shows that they don't actually value love at all. Because if they only value love with power attached to it, that means they value power, not love. Period. Otherwise, they just directly value love and be like, oh, yeah, it's stupid to worship power. Just worship love directly. Fuck power. Yeah, but they don't do that. So there you have it. And hopefully Bleak Past will do a follow-up video to this. Shout out to you, brother. I'd like to see what you have in store. Talk to you soon.